Hi guys, fixing the world energy crisis seems impossible, but it's not. And that's why we are here showcasing our latest solutions for district energy, commercial buildings and residential buildings. From hydronic balancing to heat pumps and sector integration included. Do you want to join this adventure? Then follow me. Let's start with single family homes. So Costas, can you please explain to homeowners what makes the difference on a global stage? Yeah. So last time at ISH has been, what, four or five years ago? It's been a long time. Uh, we have quite a lot of new things coming and we have a lot of things to tell in Danfoss. We have Everflat 4.0 joining our family. So that's the most unique state of the art flat station, unique uh, uh, easiness of, uh, of uh, serving it, uh, highest efficiency. Really cool things. We have Icon 2 joining our family on the floor heating system. We say everything happens faster with Icon. Uh, it still has hydronic balancing. It has demand-based supply temperature that has a um, third-party verified uh, substantial energy savings and so on. Maybe the one point that I would like to talk to you, David, today is uh, radiators. So we know radiators for a lot, very long time. It's kind of a, you know, it's in every, every home. It kind of, we kind of just look past it, but I think there is a huge opportunity for homeowners, for homeowners, for installers, for housing associations to do something about energy saving. Energy, CO2 saving, and also energy independence. So I'll ask you maybe, maybe a trivia question to you, David. How many um, radiators are there in Europe? I will not dare to say that, but I'm sure that you know the answer. I know the answer, and it is more than, it is more than one billion. We have more than one billion radiators, yeah, right? Of, uh, it's a huge amount of radiators. Now, I will not, I will not kind of be doing more trivia, but I'll, I'll show you two big numbers. Out of this one billion, we have those two numbers here. 500 million, so not thousand, million. 500 million, they have valves like this. So this is a manual valve, basically meaning that you set it to a certain point and it stays like that. It stays like that, and the same, same amount of hot water that goes there. No matter if it's too hot, because the sun is shining, it's too hot, but you'll keep on heating, right? So, and if it's too hot, we start opening the windows, right? Okay, this is what we call an on-off valve, right? Uh, yeah, it's, you say it's on-off. You, you, basically, you, you basically set it to a certain point, and it stays like that, mm -hmm. right? No matter how hot it gets inside of your home, or cold. You need more, okay, then you turn it. But it doesn't react. If you take this valve, right? And, uh, and you replace it with a valve like that, and you put a thermostat, then you can do something amazing. And this is what you can do. So if you go from this to this. So last year, the average heating bill in Germany, and not only in Germany, actually it was somewhere across the Central Europe, it was a rather substantial number. So it nearly doubled compared to 2020, one, right? So it was a very high number. If you had a valve, a manual valve like this, and if you went and installed a modern mechanical radiator thermostat, what you do is you cut that bill to a third. The potential savings, it's uh, impressive. And, and this is, I'll again remember, this is for 500 million radiator thermostats, right? Now, uh, there's also another thing, you know, there was another number here. So another number is 250, 250 million, right? So 250 million is when you have a thermostat, but it's a little bit like that. Maybe it's 20 years old, maybe it's 30 years old. This one I think is 30 years old. And they still operate, they're yep. still operational. Uh, if you take an old one and replace it with a modern one, then suddenly you have 8% saving. In both cases, the payback for a homeowner, oh, the payback for a homeowner is less than a year. And uh, what happens if you, if you would replace all of those with modern radiator, mechanical radiator thermostats, that would take you, that would be equal to, a, to the same saving as if you would, CO2 saving this time, as if you would take six million cars off the road. That's, right? uh, that's a lot. That's Honestly, a lot. that's a lot. That's a lot. So imagine the CO2 saving, uh, it's more than 12 billion um, uh, euro in energy bills that homeowners would be saving as well. 
So this is also rather substantial amount, right? So, and then you can take it even a step further. So if you, if you have a modern mechanical radio thermostat and you've already cut a third, you can say, okay, then I go one step further and I put on an electronic radiator thermostat. So that's the one that you can program. That's the one that can take the temperature down during the night. It can take the temperature down during the, the evening as well, uh, during the evening, during your, your vacations, for example, right? And then you can, if you, even, even compared to this one, you can take this bill and do another 17%. So basically, from going, if you really want to make a big jump, if you go from this to electronic, you can cut your bill by 50%. That's, right? uh, that's amazing. That is amazing. And also, um, because as you said, if we are on holidays, we are not at home, I think this can be managed with the phone, that's correct? So there are, there are different options, yes. right? So there are the most advanced options. Yes, mm -hmm. you have remote accessibility, so no matter where you are, you can be in a forest or by the lake or by the, on the beach, and you can, uh, you can access it and say, okay, I want the temperature to, 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 be, be, to go down, and just before you come back home, you turn the temperature to to come back on. So you come to a nice, toasty, warm home, right? Uh, there is also other versions uh, that have just local connectivity. So you can program it through Bluetooth, uh, which also adds almost the same amount of savings, a little bit less, uh, because you missed the holiday option, but uh, also is, a, let's say, a more affordable, cheaper, uh, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper option. So we are not just uh, talking about saving when you are at home, but also savings when you are outside home, when That's you are on holidays, for yeah, example. Yeah, exactly. When you're holidays, when you're sleeping, you don't want the temperature in your living room to be 21. It can be 18. And it's when you wake up, you know, you can program it again to go up to 21 or 20. That's, uh, but that's super. I yeah. mean, uh, there's a full range of, uh, of solutions to make uh, your life a little bit more efficient, I would say. Yeah, and here, the, the reason why, why I'm, you know, we have other options. We have, we have good solutions for underflow heating as well. The reason I've, I chose to kind of to discuss radiators here is because it's so quick. It's so quick, you know. Replacing this, then this, and, and adding a new, a new unit, it's fast. Mm -hmm. It's fast, the payback time is, is cheap, and it's, and it's huge amounts. These are huge, huge amounts and huge, huge impact. Okay, so it's like a plug and play nearly. You just uh, in, a in, a way, uh, in a way, yes. Super. Well, uh, Costas, thanks a lot for your explanation. You guys uh, out there, uh, if you're here at the booth, uh, at the exhibition, sorry, come here. We are at Hall 9.1, booth uh, CEO 6. Remember, see us Canada. And if uh, you are at home, you can always visit our uh, landing page, ish.danfoss.com. You will get the full experience in there. Thank you, and go to the next one. So, this is how we move from saving energy from single family homes into multifamily homes. And that's why I'm here with uh, my colleague David Stoner. David, uh, can you please uh, let us know uh, a little bit more about you? I know that you are our senior product manager for floor heating controls, right? Sure. I've been with uh, Danfoss for almost 15 years, working with uh, floor heating, different components in, in product management throughout the entire time. Super. Um, I have uh, a couple of questions for you, so uh, I will just let them know you can answer, and then we will take one after another one. The first one is uh, why our solutions can speed up the installation process. Yeah, so the Icon 2 system was designed to use a minimum of tools during installation from plug and play terminals to magnet mounted on the thermostats and there's no disassembly required when you take it out of the box. So it's just out of the box, onto the wall and then you're off. Super. Uh, also, can you explain us a little bit more about uh, the communication protocol that we are using in uh, this solution? Yeah, so we are using uh, Sigpi, which is a very common smart home solution protocol. We're utilizing it both on the thermostats, but also the main controller itself is Zigbee compatible, so we can use it directly with the Ali system right out of the box, and you can also utilize it with other Zigbee smart home-based solutions. Great, and uh, also, um, we are then talking about a flexible solution. Uh, why is that? Why we can say this is a flexible solution? Yeah, so 
It's, it's very flexible in the sense that we, we have a, uh, a lot of different applications we can run from flow temperature control applications, cooling, a combination of those. We can do wired or wireless systems. We can have in-wall, on-wall frames. We even do things with the actuators that uh, accommodate different voltages and so on, depending on the markets that we work with and the customer's preference. So basically, we can offer a solution for, for all applications within flow heating. Great, and uh, also this solution can be entirely controlled from your phone. Is that uh, correct? That's correct. Through Zigbee, we talk uh, directly with the Alley Gateway, which is, of course, our end user app, but uh, also, um, again, with Zigbee, we can go with, uh, with other smart home solutions, so we can do remote access and um, scheduling and so on with, uh, with through, the, through the app. It also works with our ETVs and, and many more products will come into this platform going forward, all controllable from the phone. So that means that you can create like periods, for example, where you are at home, you are out home, holidays, all these kind of options, just from your mobile device. Exactly. So uh, thank you, David, for chipping in with us. It was a pleasure uh, for you guys. Remember, we have a lot of content uh, in addition, so see you there. So, after showcasing our EvoFlat 4.0 solutions, we are moving here to heat pumps. That's why I'm here with uh, my colleague uh, Mathieu. Mathieu, welcome. Uh, you are a heat pump program manager for Danfoss Climate Solutions, right? Yes. Can you please uh, let us know a little bit more about yourself? So, yeah, so Mathieu Canal. I'm the heat pump program manager at Danfoss. I've uh, been working for Danfoss for more than seven years, uh, primarily in the compressor division and been appointed at this new position uh, last year. Uh, seeing the tremendous growth of the heat pump market, I'm overviewing the different uh, strategy of the product line within Danfoss, targeting uh, the new development for, for the heat pump market. Super. Uh, I have some questions for you, so let we go, let's go with the first one. Uh, what is the potential of the heat pump market? So, as you may all know, that the, the heat pump market is uh, currently uh, booming in Europe. Uh, last year, in 2022, sorry, uh, we saw a growth uh, that was above 40 percent versus 2021, and we reached with all different type of uh, heat pump application up to three million heat pumps sold uh, in Europe. So, meaning air to air, so much more air conditioner style heat pump, but also air to water, brine to water heat pump. So that gives the baseline right now is about uh, 3 million heat pumps. And uh, we think that the market can reach uh, within uh, 2030 something close to uh, 10 million, uh, 10 million uh, heat pumps. The, the saturation of the market will be between those 5 and 10 million heat pumps. So that's going to be a tremendous uh, boom within the seven years to come. And uh, Danfoss is here to try to, um, to help the, the industry uh, growing within this uh, booming market. Super, thanks a lot. Uh, my next question is, uh, what is uh, the focus of uh, Danfoss Climate Solutions in the heat pump market? So within the heat pump market, in fact, uh, like I just said, there are different type of application. And uh, Danfoss uh, Climate Solution aims, aims to uh, optimize uh, the heat pump and to enable the, the heat pump to work properly within the building. So we are working on an end-to-end -end optimization from the source, which is the heat pump in itself, up to the up to the hydronic and the water distribution within the buildings. So we're going to have a strong focus in the future in our development on all the heat pumps that are operating with uh, water as a media. So we don't have a strong focus on the air-to-air -air, uh, heat pump. It's going to be mainly water-based heat pump where we're going to focus in the future. Great. Um, also, uh, what type of solutions are we uh, addressing for the heat pump market? So the heat pump market is, uh, is quite a big market, right? And uh, if we start from the, from the beginning, from the residential side, for example, uh, in, your, in your home, Arafa, uh, in the future, you, will, uh, you will may have to change your, your boiler and then you will, uh, you will use uh, some uh, air to water heat pump. Uh, so the market is going, especially on the, on the monoblock side, uh, towards R290. And here we have a wide, uh, wide range of components addressing this uh, market, starting with some of the, our flagships, which is the, the brace plated exchanger technology, where you can find uh, one example of it uh, on our uh, booth today. Uh, so we, are, we have released recently 
and completely release a range of um, of uh, plated exchanger optimized uh, for uh, for propane, meaning uh, reducing the refrigerant charge and uh, optimizing the, the performance. Uh, so this is our main flagships, and then we have also new uh, new products that are there for this market, such as expansion valves, uh, filter dryers, uh, pressure switches, uh, even system controllers that we can provide to the market. And last but not least, we are working on a new development for uh, gas detector. So this is uh, what we are doing mainly for the propane market on the residential side. When we go to multifamily buildings, we are currently developing a new range of uh, compressors in order to address uh, this market that is above 20 kilowatt. With propane, you can find one of our uh, new solution, which is called the uh, VZN. So it's a variable speed compressor that will go from 20 to uh, 80 kilowatts. Uh, and of course, we're going to release also a new set of uh, plated exchanger optimized for propane. So those are our main focus on the, on the residential single family homes and multifamily homes. Uh, and when we go to, uh, to more commercial slash industrial application, we have different type of uh, technology that we want to, to address. Uh, so waste heat recovery uh, is going to be a particular segment where we're going to focus. So there are lots of accesses that is available uh, within Europe everywhere. And uh, one of these in order to, uh, to improve and to reduce the, the need of energy is to reuse this excess heat to, um, uh, to heat, for example, some buildings. And here we have uh, two different types of technologies that we want to address. One is, uh, is a turbo core technology that is uh, just here on my, on my left uh, that will allow to recover the, the wasted energy, for example, from a data center and to re-inject it into, uh, into a district heating grid. Same goes with supermarket where you can reuse the excess heat from the supermarket to, uh, to hit your neighborhood, let's say. So here with the turbo core technology, we are able with the new high lift version to reach uh, 67 degrees water temperature. Uh, and last but not least, uh, for a bigger application, uh, we also have, uh, with our new acquisition of uh, BOC, we have a natural fit with some uh, BOC compressors uh, focusing on CO2. And here we can provide also for waste heat recovery application or direct heating application, we can provide solution that may go up to 90 degrees uh, heating temperature. So as you can see, we are able to cover solutions from uh, the low end capacities, residential side for, for your home, Rafa, up to uh, data center application with several megawatts. Super, uh, thanks a lot, Mathieu, for taking the time to come here with us. Uh, we are now going to the next stage, so just follow us. So, we have been discussing about how to save energy in residential buildings. We have been talking about multifamily houses and single family houses. But now it's time to move to commercial buildings. Follow me. Hi guys. As you may know, commercial buildings are responsible for 40% of the energy use. And that's why I have here my colleague, Vic Marinic. Vic, you are Global Strategy Director for Commercial Buildings. Uh, can you please let us know a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Thanks, David. So first off, yeah, thank you everybody for uh, participating here today. Uh, as David said, my name is Victor Marinich, and I take responsibility for the commercial building segment within Danfoss. You know, Danfoss, we have a really broad product offering, and you know, it's important that we get all of these products that are working together, communicating together, so that we can help reduce the energy that buildings consume. As David said today, 40% of all the global energy is used just to heat and cool buildings. And I think Danfoss brings us uh, really good solutions in how to drive that energy down. So if we look into some of the products that we have here today, um, if we can start with our uh, Danfoss Drive. Now the Drive is a really versatile product. It can really work on fan motors, on pumps, it can work on compressors. So anywhere that you've got a motor and you're looking to uh, optimize its energy use, right, the Danfoss Drive uh, is a good fit. Now for us, we've also uh, developed what we call our EC Plus, uh, which is the uh, Novenco solution. So it's a 
fan plus motor combination, it'll get us up to, uh, you can see, up to 85% uh, uh, efficiency, which is the, the tops in the market. So the drive is really helping us uh, uh, make sure that we're reducing the, uh, the uh, energy used uh, within the building. If we think of a commercial building, there's really a couple of different subsystems, if you will, in the building, right? First you have the energy generation part, right? What's making that hot or that cold air or that hot or cold water? Then we've got the interchange where we're going to be transferring that energy into the building and then you've got the distribution throughout the building. The broad Danfoss portfolio, we can address all three of those subsystems for you. And if we start with the energy generation side, there's no better place to start than with our turbo core compressor. So the turbo core compressor, the one that we have here, you can see is our TGH model. This one here is about 300 kilowatts of capacity. Uh, you can tell from the green uh, uh, shield, it, we're using green refrigerants in this unit, so we can operate with 515B, we can operate with 1234ZE, so low GWP solutions, which is important, we know, as the Montreal Protocol Kigali Amendment kicks in and we continue to see uh, reductions in GWP coming. Uh, this compressor, uh, as I mentioned, is the TGH. The H means high lift. What do we mean with high lift? We're able to get bigger temperature differences, which means that this unit, or this compressor, when we put it in a unit, can get us higher temperatures when it's a heat pump, and it can work in higher ambient conditions when we're looking to do cooling. And so it's uh, very important now, right, when you get up to 70 degrees C water um, in the building, and we can do it with an oil-free compressor that's running with a uh, um, environmentally friendly refrigerant like 1234ZE or 515B, and we do it uh, super efficiently. So the compressor itself is really the uh, main uh, and only moving part in the chiller, but some of the components around the product is also really important. And if we look back, we have our OFC check valve. So a check valve, we may think is a pretty simple and basic uh, uh, component, which it is, but when we talk low density refrigerants like R1234ZE, what's really important is that we minimize the pressure drop in the uh, unit because low density refrigerants, even a little bit of pressure drops puts a significant impact uh, on the efficiency of the overall system. So we've developed this valve specifically to work in oil-free environments, specifically to work with low GWP refrigerants like R1234ZD, and of course it's designed to fit perfectly onto our turbo core compressor. Now this has the lowest pressure drop in the market that you can find, and it's also the quietest valve that you'll find. So the combination of the valve along with the turbo core compressor makes sure that that chiller that you've got operating, whether that chiller is a uh, um, cooling only unit, whether it's a heat pump, or whether it's sitting back in your district energy station and you're just providing district uh, uh, um, heating or cooling to the building, you're going to have a super quiet, super efficient system running to make sure that your building stays as comfortable as possible. So, from energy generation, we will move to energy, energy transfer. Um, thanks for that great explanation, Vic. Uh, now we are here in the heat transfer section, so up to you. Sure, thanks. thanks again, David. So, once we've generated the energy, the hot water or the cold water, right, we need a, an interchange into the building, and that's typically done through uh, a heat exchanger, in this case, a, a plate and frame type heat exchanger. So, the Danfoss can, uh, offering can be a couple different things here. We can offer a single standalone heat exchanger, like you see here, our uh, uh, Sondex brand, uh, high efficiency, low pressure drop. Again, pressure drop is critical. High pressure drop means high energy usage, so we want to avoid uh, right, pressure drops anywhere we can. So low pressure drop, high tr heat transfer efficiency um, is going to make sure that we, again, get the, the hottest or coldest water that's needed back into the building. Danfoss also has a range of heavy duty stations where we can actually take this heat exchanger and incorporate it into an entire subsystem, if you will, including pumps and valves uh, and other uh, um, devices that will control that water flow into the building. So if you've got a larger building and you need some uh, support in having all that laid out and you want a, um, a simple single solution, Danfoss can do that as well with our heavy duty stations. Um, so now that we've got the energy into the building through the heat exchanger, we have to distribute that energy, that hot and that cold water throughout the building. Super, super critical that we do that 
um, again, well and efficiently. We can have the most efficient chiller with our TurboCore products and fantastic uh, drives, getting the, the water just the right temperatures that we need and doing it super efficiently. If we bring it into the building and we uh, do a poor job controlling it, then really all that energy that we're, we're saving here, we're going to lose it on the back end. And again, that's why at Danfoss, we can bring that whole solution from the manufacturing of the energy, the distribution of the energy, and now distribution throughout the building. And it's so critical that all three of those parts are done well and done right, so that your building is ultimately getting the most efficient uh, um, use of the energy there. So if we look at the products that we have on the building distribution side, uh, really our, our signing chart, it's our ABQM valve. And so this is a pressure independent control valve. And the, what that's going to ensure is that you've got uh, just as it, uh, uh, the name tells us, it's going to have constant pressure to all of your air handlers or fan coils or uh, uh, variable air volume boxes and so on throughout your building, the radiators uh, on the heating side. Uh, and it's critical to have um, good consistent flow because then that means we're going to have good consistent temperatures coming into, into those uh, uh, components and that's going to give you the best heat transfer and the best heating and cooling in the building. And good heating and cooling, of course, is going to reduce energy but it's also going to make sure you've got comfortable uh, tenants or customers in your building. It's not too hot, too cold. You don't have big temperature swings in the building. We want to make sure that's done uh, comfortably. So our pressure independent valves, and we have uh, several different uh, options you can see here, our ABQM Flexo. We're combining eight different valve functionalities into the one body. We have our new larger ABQM valves now up to a DIN 80. Uh, sorry, a DIN 40 uh, connection size, so we can cover a much broader range of flow rates, much larger buildings. Um, and both of these uh, can be equipped with our Novacon actuators. So the valves themselves then can be controlled back by the um, you know, central building automation system so that we're sure that we're getting uh, the best flow, we're getting the least uh, uh, energy consumption in the building, and we're doing that throughout the entire uh, building. And these are going to uh, 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 tune the valves throughout the entire um, building uh, operating cycle. Whereas if we have a more manual valve like our uh, MSV here, a uh, fantastic solution, a more low cost solution. Um, without the actuator then, um, it's a, a manually uh, uh, adjusted valve, so you maybe don't get the full benefits of the Novacon um, that we have here. And then finally, we also have uh, here on the far right, the sonometer. And what that is, is a very high precision uh, energy um, metering device. Now with our ABQM valves, uh, and if you have the Novacon, we can do uh, some very accurate estimations of energy usage, let's say, you, you know, plus five, seven percent. Uh, but if you want to do something around customer billing and you want to know the energy use per floor or per room or something like this, then our sonometer is really the solution there and you get very, very accurate uh, energy usage information and that allows you to bill separately, uh, but then of course also allows you to manage um, the energy usage throughout the building. So I think it's, it's pretty clear if we look at that Danfoss offering overall, when we look at commercial buildings, we can run the, the full gamut, really everything from generating that hot and cold water for you using the turbo core compressors. Uh, we can distribute that water using drives on our pumps, using our heat exchangers, and then we make sure that that hot and cold water is optimally used in the building with our ABQM valves, sonometers, and so on. Thank you, Vic. It was uh, an amazing explanation. Uh, you guys, if you want to have the same feeling that the one that we are having here at the booth, remember, visit us at ish.danfoss.com. Thank you. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Our next stop is uh, our Danfoss heat exchanger wall. For that, I have my colleague here, Flavio. Welcome, Flavio. Flavio, he's the head of HIVAC and Marine for Danfoss Climate Solutions. So please, Flavio, can you um, introduce a bit yourself? Yes, thank you. My name is Flavio Conti from Danfoss Climate Solutions Heat Exchanges. And today I'm really pleased to be here in ISHA to introduce yourself the new the revolutionary D plates. Great. I have a first question for you, Flavio. Uh, can you let us know a little bit uh, the value proposition and the benefits of our new heat exchanger? Uh, yes. I would like to say that these uh, plates represent very well the DNA of Danfoss to be innovative and uh, exceed expectation. And um, with these plates, we are able to increase up to 10% the heat transfer coefficient. 
And uh, we can do that because uh, we have a, a new design of the heat transfer area, and uh, we are using thinner plates. Generally, on the market, uh, in the market heat exchangers, we are using 0.5 or 0.4 millimeters. In, the case, in this case, thanks to the quality of our production, we are able to press 0.3 millimeters. Um, what is the value? That we can use less number of plates for, for the same thermal duty, so each, which means less material resources. And, um, uh, but despite 0.3 millimeters, we are able to reach uh, 16 bar and uh, even 25 bar also with 0.4 millimeters. And we can do that because we are using a special composite uh, diagonal reinforcements in this area that make the plates very, very strong. Uh, we are also using a, a composite uh, for this hanging system. This permits the plate to be very, very, very easy positioning and uh, assembling and maintenance experience very, very nice. So very easy to open and close. Um, we have, uh, if you can see here, we have also this special uh, uh, alignment corner. Uh, and this alignment corner is very important because it permits the plate pack to be extremely aligned. Also, when you have a big heat exchanges, you can uh, perfectly uh, have the plate in pack. Uh, last but not least, uh, I would like mentioning something also about the gasket. Uh, we have developed this new D-lock system that permit the, the, to be the gasket perfect in place to the, on the plates. And you do not have parts of the gasket outside exposed to UV lights. That means to extend a lot the lifetime of the heat exchanges. Super. Um, our next question will be uh, in which applications we can use uh, the heat exchanger? Yeah. The application depending a lot of the size of the plates. These uh, plates is we call D110. Is very fit very well with the district heating, district cooling, uh, data center, uh, pressure breakers, and all the uh, application where we need to recover heat. Super. Um, I was going to ask you about the strong plate, but I think you have uh, also explained it uh, previously. So uh, thanks a lot, Flavio, for taking your time uh, to chip in with us, uh, and uh, well, see you in the next uh, in the next stop. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you. So we have been discussing with Flavio about heat exchangers. Now we turn to Titan. Titan is the algorithm that goes inside our Lean Heat solution. Let's go to the next stage. I'm here with my colleague Adrian Brincianu. Adrian, you are product portfolio manager for district energy substations. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you for having um, me. I have um, a question for you. It's uh, what are the challenges, the main challenges our customers have with substations? Yeah, that's a good question. I think one of the main challenges that our customers have with substations in general is that the substations are not commissioned properly. It means that the differential pressure controllers, the flow controllers, the electronic controllers, they are not commissioned the way that it should. And this affects the performance of the network and also affects the user comfort. Because when a substation is not commissioned properly, then you have oscillations. And oscillations mean bad user comfort and also mean that you have a high return temperature. So it means high pumping costs and, uh, and uh, high CO2 emissions for the district heating utility. My next question is, uh, what's the difference between Danfoss substations and other substation manufacturers? Well, uh, the biggest difference is that we own everything and we put our passion in developing our components and our components work together in a solution which is called substation. So we know how everything works and we know how to commission everything. My next question to you, Adrian, is uh, how does Titan solve these challenges? Ah, yes. So Titan solves these challenges by introducing a new technology which is called a digital twin. It means that if we know all the components that we use in our substations, we know how they work together, we can build a digital twin of that substation. We can run simulations in the cloud, and those simulations give us the best parameters for the differential pressure controller, the flow controller, the electronic controller, to set at the point of commissioning in our substation. So this is how Titan is solving the pain point of bad 
uh, oscillations on the secondary side, so bad user comfort, and also high return temperatures towards uh, the district heating utility. But uh, what is uh, Titan exactly? Titan is an algorithm that lives in the cloud. It's, it is an add-on to our monitoring solution called LinkHeat Monitor. And it is a commissioning tool deployed to that uh, LinkHeat Monitor solution. So, after that, what is next? Well, what can be next, you know? We have access to a lot of data. So we can improve Titan as we go along. We can develop better services for our customers. We will include our self services not only in engineer to order manufacturer stations, but in also our standard villa stations product portfolio that we are delivering today. So we will make a complete product portfolio digitalized with the power of digital twin to commission every station towards our customers. Super. Thanks a lot, Adrian, for taking the time to be here with us. Really appreciate. And well, I wish you to uh, experience and enjoy the, the booth sensation. Thank you. I thank think it's been a good experience. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Hi, guys. Glad to have you here again. Now we are going to speak uh, about one of our amazing softwares, LeanHeat. I'm here with my colleague, Paul Ross. Paul Ross, he's uh, the business development manager for uh, LeanHeat. So, Paul, uh, welcome. Uh, would you like to tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself? Yes, sure. Hey, I'm Paul. Um, I'm the business development manager for LeanHeat, our amazing software specially made for district heating. And today we would like to talk a little bit about the software, talk about the optimization potential for district heating, and answer some questions. Super. Um, I have the, the first question for you, Paul. Uh, what is the potential of lean heat in relation to district energy? Oh, there's a huge potential. Just to name a couple of them. We can plan and design networks uh, with a digital twin. We can monitoring them. We can optimize the network. Depends on lower temperatures or lower pressure in the network. And this just with software integration. And also we can use the software to optimize our buildings to lower the energy in the buildings and also to have a monitoring over, our, over all our whole network. And also our newest part, Lean Heat Titan, is a software for auto commissioning of our heavy duty stations and our, our um, substations in the network. Thanks for that great input, uh, Paul. Uh, I have also another question. Can this software contribute to the carbonization? Yes, it can. We use uh, AI systems to forecast the load of the network. So we need a little bit of customer data from the past, and then we put it in our AI algorithm and forecast the load of the next five days. This gives us the option with the software to optimize the temperature at the point when it's needed in the network to reduce waste heat, to optimize the transport of the energy into the grid and also to optimize the pressure into the grids. Thanks, Paul. Um, I have another question for you. Uh, does this software include the option to design and plan district heating networks? Yes, we have Im implemented a designer into the software so we can design and plan new networks out of the green field or we can use existing data and import it into the software. And we have very smart algorithm to help us to plan this network as efficient as possible. So we use uh, pipe dimensions, we use the load forecaster to plan future networks and also we have uh, huge analytic tools to uh, look deeper into the network and understand the future needs of the networks Thank you, uh, Paul, for taking the time to be in here with us today. Uh, for you guys that are here behind the screens, uh, remember uh, ish.danfoss.com. Everything is happening also there. We have a uh, live uh, from the booth section. You can see all the all the videos there. And uh, if you are here at the exhibition uh, hall 9.1, booth uh, CO6, you are more than welcome to uh, yeah drop us a visit here. Thanks a lot. The time for talk is over. I hope today you have learned a little bit more about accelerating the green transition today. So remember, visit our landing page, ish.danfoss.com. 
you will have a lot of things there. You will have uh, videos from the booth, you can connect with our experts, lot, a lot of interesting stuff. So I want to personally thank you for taking your time to be with us and see you next time.